awkward public fetches are. Yeah. Some are slow down naturally, and others have these awkward armrests right in the middle, which makes it impossible to lie down if you are ever tired. We call these features hostile architecture, and it's hard to imagine that someone could ever design something like this, except someone did. Everything is designed with a purpose, and with the case of public features, just like public benches, they can affect how attractive or inviting our cities really are. Subtler than that, though, is its hostility towards certain populations. If you don't want people experience, if you don't want people experiencing homelessness in front of your shiny new upper class neighborhood, you'd make every surface uncomfortable to stay on for prolonged periods of time. You see, these conspicuously innocuous designs can affect how or can be harmful for our cities, especially since they ostracize certain populations. You see, a slightly different perspective would ask why homelessness is a problem in the first place, and why we, with all our privilege, perceive people experiencing it with such disgust. Now, I can talk all about the social ramifications of designing inviting benches, but the point here is that if I, a civil engineering, a civil engineering student, want to improve society through infrastructure, I must understand society, or at least attempt to understand society itself and its needs. While civil engineering isn't exactly designing public benches, they are a part of the built environment. And as such, we must consider their broader impact on society. In a way, we must encompass diverse ideas when designing them. My journey towards engineering really started when I heard this crazy story about a med student who kept passing out at the sight of blood, eventually having to drop out of med school. Don't worry, that won't be any of you all, but I didn't want that to be me. <laughs> afraid, I couldn't become an, afraid I couldn't become a doctor, I figured I'd become an engineer instead. I was drawn to civil engineering, not really because I was into construction or bridges, rather because I read somewhere that civil engineering is engineering for society. At the time, I didn't realize what that meant, but I knew that I liked people and that I wanted to affect positive change in the world. So much so, I came into Hopkins not fully committed to the major. I told myself, if there was a different way to achieve my goal, you know, changing the world, I'd switch majors. <laughs> what I didn't realize at the time, though, was that if I really wanted to achieve this goal, I couldn't restrict myself to simply what my major was. Tonight, I'm gonna to introduce you to a different way to think about our identities and our life trajectories through a little bit of graph theory. Not these kinds of graphs, <laughs> this guy. In math, a graph is a structure that shows relationships between objects, which I call beats, using links. Does that make sense, Nicole? Okay. <laughs> I want you to think about who you are. Think about your identity. Think about your interests and passions. I want you to think about your perspectives and beliefs. Think of every moment and decision that led to where you are right here, right now, in the glass pavilion. <laughs> if each of these moments is a beat, then our stories are like a collection of beats, and our identities are the links that tie them together. Put simply, we are the sum of our experiences. Some beats are weighted more heavily than others, big moment, small moment, um, <laughs> which means that every event or interaction affected you in its own unique way. I believe that we all have a general idea of who we are and where we're going. And as a result, we put ourselves in whatever position it takes to get there, whether that means taking certain classes or applying for certain research positions or internships. For me, the summer after my freshman year, I participated in the Community Impact Internships Program also known as CIIP. CIIP. <laughs> CIIP is a faith emergency program which pairs students here at Hopkins with nonprofit and government organizations to work with them for the summertime to advance their, that organization's mission in whatever way they can. That summer, my placement was not even remotely engineering. In fact, I was often out under the hot, sticky summer sun building gardens or driving around Baltimore talking to people about food and security issues. Through this experience, I learned to engage with the Baltimore community and ask the, how, ask the 
about problems and learn what people's real needs were. I learned how historical and systemic forces put people in positions far beyond their control, but also what grassroots organizations are doing to give people this power back. At the time, it felt like a bit of a nice detour off my path towards becoming an engineer, but it was really just the first step. That fall, I decided to return to CIIP as a peer mentor, and I wondered, I felt like my peers here at Hopkins were getting ahead of me in their professional careers as I just did CIIP again. I wondered what I would gain from going through this program again. The answer doesn't reveal itself for another year, though. In Steve Jobs' 2005 commencement speech at Stanford, he says, you can't connect the dots, in this case beats, in your life while looking forward, only when you look back. We can cast the future as much as we want, but the truth is we don't know which events in our lives are gonna be the, mo the most memorable or hold the most weight. This was one of those moments. The year after I was a peer mentor, I really struggled to find a civil engineering internship. I did everything I was supposed to. I attended all the career fairs, I sent all the LinkedIn connections, I sent all the follow-up emails that you're supposed to. Um, nothing came through. However, through a series of fortunate events, I landed an internship in DC. Uh, really, series of fortunate. I, I started two weeks later. Um, <laughs> uh, and there, I had the chance to attend a public meeting for one of the projects that, that, that I was placed on. There, I witnessed the clash between community members who vehemently expressed disappointment at the lack of inclusion of bike lanes for the street redesign project that I was on, and engineers who didn't quite understand the who believed that the community members didn't quite understand the feasibility of their request. Because my, CI my CIP background gave me a unique perspective on this interaction. My first thought was to ask, who isn't in the room? While it was great that the community members came out and advocated for their needs, I often wondered whose voice went on missing, who, whose voice went unheard, because this, grand, this public meeting, which occurred on a random Tuesday at 6 p.m., doesn't quite tell who's in the neighborhood or who's affected by the projects that we're working on. If I'm gonna be an engineer who, if I'm gonna be an engineer for the people, I can't stand by idly as we have such few engagements with the public. It's imperative that we engage with the public about our projects as much as we do, as much as we work on them themselves, or as widen the gap between community and government. Now, I couldn't have made any of these realizations without my CIIP background. And since we don't know what the future holds, it's important we diversify where our ideas come from. And in doing so, we'll increase our chance of having more weighted beats. So in a sense, it's, intent it's important we intentionally diversify our beats. If we're pretty rigid about the places in our life or the areas in which we get these beats from, then our network is much smaller. However, if we diversify our experiences, like really diversify them, whether that's taking an Xbox class on zombies or joining the fire throwing club or whatever that means to you, then we'll give ourselves, we'll be allowing ourselves to spend more time in these areas while allowing ourselves to, to uh, create new beats, new memorable beats in our lives. Raise your hand if you're ever asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> I believe that our parents subconsciously limited our perspective on what adulthood looks like through this very innocent question. We're trained from a young age to aim to be. I want to be a pilot. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. While this serves as a rudimentary form of goal setting, it is severely limiting in our ability to create. But don't panic, it's okay to have these goals. I'm just encouraging you to expand and redefine and broaden these goals. If we don't give ourselves the space to imagine, we can't create. If we constrict our vision of what the, if we, if just, if we simply aim to be, we constrict our vision of what the future looks like to just a list of professions listed on glass doors. This aim to think that we can only be robs us of enjoying the journey towards achieving our goals. While it puts us on a directed path to achieving our goals, it prevents us from 
experience from strength too far from experiences that might be that might be more meaningful or memorable to us. I believe that if we want to achieve our full potential, or better yet, gain enough <laughs> momentum to achieve our goals, instead of asking ourselves, what do I want to be? We should ask ourselves, what do I want to do? When someone described civil engineering as for society, it made it so much easier to push through difficult times while being open to new and exciting experiences. Many of you in here are pre-med and want to be doctors. You might not be, but still, this is for you. Um, <laughs> I want you to ask yourself, why do you want to be a doctor? Or whatever else. Uh, ask yourself, why do you want to be a doctor? I implore you to dig and find out your true purpose. And whatever that reason is, whatever that why is, should be your goal in itself. Realistically, though, what does this look like? You might be thinking to yourself, Oh wait, I still need a certain GPA, or I need to get an MCAT score, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> to that, I say, do what you have to do. Complete all your requirements. Please, complete all your requirements. But, <laughs> but, don't box yourself in your major. Don't, don't, put your, don't trap yourself in the box that is your major, or the track that is your pre-profession. Instead, let's create vision for ourselves and think about ways and leave the door open to, for ways that we can actualize them. And in doing so, we'll give ourselves the chance to create new, meaningful, powerful beats in our lives. So when that next opportunity comes knocking on your door, instead of turning it away because it doesn't seem to quite align with the path that you're on, why not embrace it, knowing that it could be a significant beat in your life one day?